Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd Today we're going to talk about dhum or oppression and we're going to talk about the different types of oppression and we're going to talk about three different types of oppression we're going to talk about dhum al nafs dhum fi haqqillah wa dhum fi haqqal ghayr so, and I'll explain all of these terms to you once we get through the hadith of the Prophet So this is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, and they, this was uh, narrated by, it said, An Al-Qamata, An Abdillah, Qal, Lama nazalat alladhina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanuhum bi dhum. So, Abdullah, I think it's Abdullah bin Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that when the verse in the Quran, the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and verily uh, those, alladhina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanuhum bi dhun, those who do, not, uh, who do not mix their faith with oppression. Verily those people who do not mix their faith with oppression. Faith, we know is iman. We know about faith, I believe, in Shabbat Allah. Oppression means that when you take somebody else's haq, somebody else's rights. For example, one way in which you can oppress other people, that if you, for example, if you are the boss of someone, and then you uh, treat that person bad, that can be a type of oppression. Also, another way you can be an oppressor is if you're a parent, you're a mother or a father or someone, and you treat your children very bad. You oppress them. You take everything from them, and you don't give them any rights, no hawk. That's oppression. Or someone could be in a position of authority. They're the boss or the leader of a country or whatever, and maybe they take the rights of the people. Like, you guys aren't familiar, but in Syria, what's going on, the president is killing the people. He's killing the Muslims there, because he's Shia. And he's killing the believers, and he's taken their right. He's taken one of their most honorable things, which is their life. He's taken their life and their wealth. This is a called oppression. And in Arabic, they say, vum. That's one form of vum. So we're going to talk about three different forms in this hadith. So when that verse was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu the Sahaba, they didn't, they didn't quite understand, or they thought they, they thought they understood the meaning, but the meaning was a little bit different than they understood it. And let's see the hadith and, and see if we can uh, uncover what they understood. So the verse was, those who believe and do not mix their faith with oppression. And what's oppression again? Who can tell me oppression? Voom. And what is voom? Okay, it's like being unfair. It's taking somebody else's right. That's a type of oppression. Taking their haq. It could you could be stealing from them. You could be taking their family. You could be all kind of different ways having racism and making that in a system. Uh, taking the people and saying you people are white or you people are black. You have to go over there. That's a type of oppression. Not letting them participate in the society. That's a type of oppression. That means you took their right, a right that all the people have, no matter what. Allah has given them a right as human beings. Okay? So, this verse, we have the verse. Then he said in the hadith, Shakka thalika ala ashab Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The companions, radiallahu ta'ala, when they heard this verse, they had some. Uh, they didn't quite understand what the meaning was. They, they, they weren't sure if they had the correct meaning. And then, وَقَالُوا So they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Which one of us does not oppress himself? Everyone does oppression. Everyone doesn't give uh, the rights fully. Okay, so we all have this sin, is what they're saying. 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Faqara Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, laysa huwa kama tadhunun. Inma huwa kama qala al-Luqman li ibnihi, ya bin la ya bunayya la tushrik billahi inna shirka li dhumun azim." In Surah Al-Luqman. So then the Prophet وسلم, as usual وسلم, he gave the clarification. The Sahaba, they used to ask the Prophet وسلم, anytime they didn't understand something from the Quran. They asked the Prophet وسلم, because the Sahaba, they knew the Arabic language excellent. Okay? That was their language. And in those days, you didn't need to know school. Everyone spoke Fusha. Everyone spoke the, the beautiful Arabic because that was in its in its uh, perfect form, or its best form. And so they understood the meaning of the, the, the Arabic language, and they understood the their culture, and they understood their society. But sometimes some things in the Quran came with maybe a new meaning. So when they didn't understand that meaning, or they thought they understood it one way, they would ask the Prophet وسلم, to clear it up for them. So in this hadith, they asked, they said, O oh Prophet, وسلم, you know, they said, Ya Rasulullah, this is the meaning they said. So they, they said, oh, which, one of, which one of us doesn't oppress himself? You know, because they're saying everybody does oppression. The Prophet وسلم, said, It's not like you think. He said, Verily, it is like. What Luqman said to his son, and he said, Oh my son, this is in the, the verse in the Quran in Surah Al-Luqman. He said, Oh my son, Allah, this is the verse of the Quran, Oh my son, do not commit shirk with Allah, do not associate partners with Allah. Verily, shirk is the greatest type of dhum, or the greatest type of oppression. So that lets us know that one of the types of oppression and the greatest type of oppression is to uh, take the right or not give Allah his right. What is Allah's right then? Then we have to know what is Allah's right. The Prophet said in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal he was riding on the, the back of a donkey and Mu'adh asked him uh, the Prophet وسلم, asked him he said, Ya Mu'ad, atadri ma haqa Allah al-ibadi? Wa ma haqa al-ibadi ya Allah? He said, O oh, Mu'ad, do you know what the right of Allah is on his slave? And the right of the slave on, upon Allah? And then Mu'ad, radiallahu ta'ala, he said, Allah wa Rasulu wa alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, he said, haqa Allah al-ibadi? He said that the right of Allah upon us, because we're the slaves of Allah, he said the right of Allah upon us is that we never commit shirk with him. And we worship him and him alone. That's his right. That's the right of Allah upon his slaves. And then he said, And then he said, and then the right of the servant, meaning us, is that Allah will not punish you if you worship him and him alone. That means you never commit any shirk. You give him his, the haq, then Allah will not punish you. The shahid, or the purpose here, the point is, is getting to the types of boom. So in that hadith, that illustrates for us that Allah's right is to be worshipped alone, no shirk. And that boom or oppression, is not to give Allah his right. And that his right is what? To worship him and uh, him alone. Allah's right is what? What is it? Good. That means, you know, it's Tawheed. Tawheed al ibadah To worship Allah alone. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. So, the three types of dhum we're going to talk about from this hadith, the first one is Allah's right, which is that we worship him and him alone. It is dhulm, it's a type of oppression if you do not, if you commit shirk. Because you're taking the right which is Allah's right. You're not giving Allah his right, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you cannot hurt Allah. 
You only hurt yourself. And that's going to get to the uh, third type. And then let's talk about the second type of vum. The second type of oppression or vum is not giving others their rights. For example, if someone has a right over you, uh, your Muslim brothers and sisters have rights over you. When you see another Muslim, no matter where he's from, he could be from Bosnia, he could be from China, he could be from Chechnya, he could be from Somalia, he could be from Canada, he could be from America. You have to give him his salams. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. For him, for, uh, for the any any Muslim, you give them their right. That is their fundamental right. And the Prophet mentioned that in another hadith about haq al Muslim, or he mentioned the five or six in another narration, six rights of the Muslim. And that's one of them, is that you uh, you give them salams. And so, not giving other people their rights, that's a type of oppression. Maybe you owe someone money. You borrowed some money. If you don't give them their money back, and you refuse to, maybe you have the money, but you don't want to, you say, I'm not going to give them their haq. Then that's a type of oppression. Because you've taken their right. That's their haq. That's their right. That money is theirs, and you must pay it back. That's their right. So the first type of oppression is Allah is not giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala him his right by committing shirk. The second type of oppression is not giving other people their rights. The third type is oppressing yourself. It's not giving yourself your rights. Not giving yourself your rights or oppressing yourself. How do we oppress ourselves? Well, one of the biggest things that the ulama they mention, the scholars they mention, is they mention that the way in which we don't give ourselves uh, a right is when we uh, when we commit sins. Whenever we do a sin, may Allah forgive us for our many sins, we're oppressing ourselves because it hurts you. If you drink uh, haram, sir, you eat haram. You curse people, you fight people, you do all kind of evil stuff. This hurts you. You may be hurting other people too, but ultimately it hurts you because Allah sees everything and you're going to be judged for what you did. So you're oppressing yourself. And that is also a serious type of oppression. You want to be careful. So we have to try our best to try to stay away from the sins. And when we commit sins, as we mentioned in the other hadith the other day, is we should try to do a good deed to cover up the bad deed. For example, if we do something, maybe we stole something. Maybe you stole something. Make sure you try to return that hawk to that person. If you steal something from a person, that means you took their right. That's their hawk. And it may also fit into uh, oppressing yourself too. So you have to be careful of both those ways. Okay, so we always have to watch uh, oppression. Oppression is very serious. The three types of oppression are what? First, is not giving Allah his right by doing shirk. Sure. The second time, it, second type is not giving other people their rights. And the third type is not giving yourself uh, your own uh, rights by doing sins. So those are some of the benefits we gain from this hadith. And the scholars, they mention many other benefits, but I think that's sufficient for us to understand what sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.